In this age of machines, what makes a nation strong? Miles of railway track, miles of surface roadways, steel ships to carry the nation's wares, plenty of fuel and power, coal from the mines, oil from deep in the earth, electric power flowing to factories and mills, driving the wheels of industry. Above all, iron and steel. Iron and steel are essential raw materials for all the major industries of India. For the railways, under heavy pressure to furnish new services to carry their growing business. For the shipyards, building the foundations of a new merchant fleet. For construction, with the second five-year plan, the nationwide program of building heavy industries is well begun. At present, most of India's steel production is at Jamshedpur in Bihar. Here are the Tata works. A second plant is Indian Iron and Steel at Burnpur in West Bengal. A third is Mysore Iron and Steel at Bhadravati. In the second five-year plan, three new plants will arise. The first at Raurkela, built in cooperation with West German capital and technicians. The second plant will come up at Bhilai, another joint enterprise with India and Russia taking part. The third new plant will appear at Durgapur, this too a partnership of Indian and British capital and technicians. Besides these, the existing mills will increase their output. Capacity at Tata's new plant will be nearly doubled. Other plants too will be expanded. India produced in 1955 one and a third million ingot tons. By 1960, the steel industry will deliver over six million ingot tons per year. India holds rich resources of high-grade iron ore. Limestone and coal are here too, the other raw materials for making steel. On the borders of Orissa and Bihar lies the ore field of Nawamandi. In this field alone are 12,000 workers. They drill and blast the iron ores, mine them and transport them to the steel mills. Every day, the bare hills echo with the noise of drilling and the cannonade of a thousand explosive charges. It is nearly 90 miles from the Navamandi fields to the mills. The raw ores travel first to the washing plant, where earth and dust are washed away. From the hoppers, iron ore cascades into waiting wagons. Every day, between two and three thousand tons of ore travel to the mills from this one field. From here, a straight run to India's city of steel, Jamshedpur. From every part of the town, you can see the tall stacks and furnaces, and hear the deep voice of the siren calling each shift. The steel works cover more than 1,500 acres. In the steel plant and its companion industries, nearly 60,000 people are employed. How is steel made? We begin with coal, converted into coke. Coke is used in the blast furnace for smelting the ore. Limestone acts as a flux to remove waste metal. Iron comes from the furnaces. It is purified in stages until it becomes steel. First of all, pulverized coal is charged into the cooking ovens from a traveling lorry. The coke battery is a whole row of separate ovens. Bhikaji works at the coke battery as driver of the door extractor. At the right moment, he controls the release of the flaming coke into a moving car. The coke has been burning in the ovens for 18 hours at a temperature more than a thousand degrees centigrade. The cars move under jets of water and in three minutes the flaming coke is quenched. A column of white steam rises from the quenching tower into the blue sky. Now the quenched coke falls into a bin ready to move on conveyors to the blast furnace. All the raw materials for steel 
coal, limestone, iron ore are found within a hundred miles of Jamshedpur. Up the long conveyors, the coke travels to the iron towers of the furnace. All the raw materials go into the blast furnace at the top. In the raging heat of the furnace, metal waste or slag is separated from the molten iron. Balwant Singh looks into the heart of the furnace to check the levels of the molten metal. He reduces pressure in the hot air blowers, for the iron is now ready to be tapped. And here it is, molten pig iron, the first stage towards finished steel. Pig iron is the basic metal used in the casting of many types of machine parts. Before casting, it is melted and poured into the requisite mould. Here we see how a gear wheel is made. Gear wheels such as these are a main feature in simple machines like this common cane crusher. In huge ladles, the pig iron travels to the steel melting shop. Many processes, machines and skills will come into play before the final quality of steel is obtained. For Thomas, at the steel melting shop, the working day has just begun. Thomas is a general foreman, supervising the blowing of steel in the Bessemer converters. In these great vessels, batches of molten iron are poured when air is blown through the metal. Now they are ready to blow. Flames leap into the night sky as air is forced through the molten metal, burning out excess impurities. For 10 or 15 minutes, the fierce flame gushes from the converter. When blowing is finished, the converter is turned over and the blown metal is poured off. Thomas gives the order to lift and the big ladles move off toward the open hearth. This is now semi-steel, partly purified. One more process is needed to burn out the phosphorus which still remains in this molten metal. From these transfer ladles, the semi-steel will go next into the open hearth furnace. In the open hearth process, the remaining phosphorus is killed, carbon is controlled, and the metal purified still further. Before the furnace is tapped, a sample of the liquid steel is taken for laboratory testing. Every batch of steel is made according to exact specifications for quality. Now the metal is ready for pouring. The five-ton ingot cases are filled with high-quality finished steel. Another shift has ended. All night long, the glow of the furnaces lights the sky. Soon it will be dawn, a new shift, a new day. In the blooming mill, an overhead crane carries the red-hot steel ingots and lures them into the soaking pit. The pit is an oven where each ingot is heated to proper temperature for rolling, somewhere near a thousand degrees centigrade. When it is heated, the ingot travels to the rollers, which will take it to the cogging mill.
These are skilled operators of the cogging mill. They guide the rollers of the ingots into long blooms, pliable lengths of steel ready for rolling into many other forms. Now the bloom is ready to be cut. The flying shear bites through the metal, cutting it into required lengths. Some of the steel is rolled again into sheets. These in turn are charged into furnaces and rolled twice more into flat sheets of required width. Ahmed works at the sheet mill, rolling the bars in a hand-operated machine. This produces sheets of high quality. After working half an hour, each man must rest for the next half hour. A charge crane thrusts its metal arm into the furnace and lifts out a sliced ingot, white hot. It carries the ingot slice to a huge hydraulic press. This is the first step in the making of railway wheels or tyres. After pressing, the flattened steel block comes out to be milled. In just over three and a half minutes, a railway tyre is perfectly rolled. Railway axles are also forged from these steel ingots. Steel forms the basic framework of all our industries. Take shipbuilding, for example. Imagine all the tons of steel plate, bolts and rivets that go into a hull alone. Yes, steel, Indian steel, has played a vital part in the launching of this graceful ship. And several others like her, which we trust, will add luster to our maritime trade for many a day to come. Steel for the automobile industry, still at an early stage, but growing rapidly. Another big consumer of steel is our bicycle industry. Production of cycles in India is expanding every year. To keep the wheels of India's transport moving smoothly calls for smooth roads. And for this purpose, we need large quantities of steam rollers, which again calls for large quantities of steel. Here are some of them, bearing the stamp made in India, ready to tackle any road job. To manufacture machines, machine tools are required. An excellent beginning has already been made in this direction by our factories. Complicated tools like lathes and drills are now coming off assembly lines in ever increasing numbers. Here you see actual motors being commercially produced. Now switch on the current and the motor revolves. Motors like this one turn the wheels of industry to produce every type of article that we need. The motors also run the machines that create other machines. In short, the cycle has no end. Thus has man, through his skill and patient research, released steel from humble ore, steel that serves humanity. <laughs> <laughs>